Yes. All right. When the frog in the lily pad dives into the water, you may not be looking. I'm going to take this step by step. We're going to repeat the same formula, the same questions. I want you repeating those questions to yourself when you're analyzing on your own. Um, Paige, we'll start with you. In that first one, help me out by finding noun verb pairs, subject predicate. Frog, very good. And what's the frog doing? Dives, very good. One more subject predicate pair. That's correct, and what's the verb? A and it has a very good page. It has a couple helping verbs to it, too. Maybe looking. Excellent job. Paige, you're doing a really good job, so let's keep it up. Um, where's the division between the two clauses? Between which two words? Yes, very good. This is one of the nice ones where the comma actually separates your clauses. Doesn't always happen. We have two clauses here, Paige. One and two, which of those is dependent? Which cannot stand on its own? I'm sorry? The second one. You may not be looking. Does that make sense by itself? Or at, read the first one. When the frog on the lily pad dives into the water. Very good. The first one is my dependent. It doesn't make sense on its own. Now I will throw out the last question. Paige's done an awesome job of bringing you to this point. I'm going to throw out the last question of the class. If it's a dependent clause, that means that it does one of those three jobs, adjective, adverb, or noun. What is this dependent clause doing in the sentence? And I want you to explain how it's doing it. Which of those three, adjective, adverb, or noun? Kristen. Excellent. It is an adverb. And it's an adverb modifying what? Telling, we, telling me when I'm looking, right? Perfect. It's an adverb modifying when I'm looking. Let me give you a simpler sentence that demonstrates the same structure. After the game, I walked home. What is my dependent clause? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. That's, that's a prepositional phrase. Let me make it a clause. My mistake. After the game ended, I walked home. Now what's the dependent? After the game ended. After the game ended. <laughs> After the game ended. And what is it modifying? What's it telling you about? It's telling you when I walked, right? It's giving me when information about walked. Any structure, phrase, or clause that tells you about when the verb happens is acting as an adverb. So that clause in this sentence and in my made up sentence are acting as adverbs. Nice work, Paige. Nice work, Kristen. Thank you. There was a time when their existence was only a theory. Who'd like to try it? Reach out. Give me subject predicate pairs. Um, there. Yes. What? Correct. Remember my hated there was structure. What else do we have? Uh, not quite. There, in this case, is a different spelling. It's being used as an adjective. A possessive pronoun is an adjective. So um, what is it modifying? We need a central noun. That's correct. And the verb? Correct. Regia, next question. I'm following the same procedure I follow with Paige, which means that all of you should repeat the same procedure when you're analyzing your own sentences. Where's the division between the two clauses? That's uh, between which two words? Correct. Time and when. Excellent. Which of those is independent and which is dependent? Which stands on its own and which really needs other information? Um, there was a time when dependent and when there was a dependent and when it was independent. Nope, you reversed them. So, one right here is independent. There was a time. Now, Richie, you might look at me and say, but that, th th I need more information. That's true, but grammatically it's intact. I've got my subject, my predicate. It's a linking verb, which makes this a predicate nominative. It's intact. Here, it's dependent. And what word makes it dependent? When. 
because when is a subordinating conjunction that begs for it to connect to something else. Now, last question. If it's a dependent clause, what is it doing in the sentence? Noun, adjective, adverb, what's it working on? Time's a noun. So what is this? If this is modifying time, if it's telling you about time. Adjective. Because remember, adjectives modify nouns. So very good. We have an adjective clause. Ask someone who knows clocks what makes them tick. Let's see here. Christian, I'm going to throw this to you, and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, this one looks simpler because it's shorter than some of the others. It's actually more complicated. Can you identify noun verb pairs for me? I'll give you a hint. There are more than two. Uh, nope. Nose is a verb. You're correct. But what is the, n the subject connected to that verb? Yeah. Who knows? So there's one pair. Give me another pair. That's why I called on you for it. Very good. You ask. Give me the third. Uh, uh, nope. No. That's correct. All right. Um, Christian, give me the divisions between the clauses. That's correct. That's correct. We have three clauses. Ask someone. That's one. Who knows clocks is two. And what makes them tick is three. OK, so you've got three there. Christian, the next question. Out of one, two, and three, identify independent, dependent for me. Um, so one would be independent. That's correct, because ask someone is a command stands on its own. What about two? Because just saying, who knows clocks, unless it's a question, but it's not a question. Remember that? It's a statement. Who knows clocks? And you look at me, I'm not sure what you're talking about. And number three? Very good. Dependent. All right. I'm doing really well. Now we've got to ask what they do. So Christian's done a fantastic job with this. And it's actually pretty complicated. And I want to spread the joy around the room. So I'm going to throw this out to the entire room. Christian, you can answer if you want to. But in two and three, if they're dependent, what part of speech? What are they acting as? What are they doing? Sydney? Two is a noun. So if it's a noun, then it's got to do one of, four, one of four things, right? It's got to be a subject, direct object, indirect object, or a prepositional phrase object. Indirect object. So it's what's the action? What's the central action of the whole sentence? Asking, right? So we're asking who knows clocks? Aha. Nope. Give you a hint. It's not a net it's not a noun. Nope. But you were so close. Sydney, you understand the sentence, you just have the wrong label. What is it? Modifying? Correct. This dependent clause modifies someone. Very good. You tell me which someone? Someone who knows clocks. That's more information used to specify someone. I like, though, Sydney, that you weren't afraid to say that it's a noun. A lot of people think that all these clauses modify something. But uh, some of them are nouns. Michael, you want to try number three? Yeah. Um, would that be an adverb? Modifying. Adverb. How you're asking them? Oh, no. It's not how you're asking them. What is it, though? It's what, asking. it's what you're asking them. And what you're asking them makes it what? The, the thing that, go ahead. Correct. Very good. So. The direct object. If I say, I kicked the ball, what's my action? Kicked. 
What's the direct object? Ball, because it's directly receiving the action of being kicked. If I say, ask someone what makes them tick, what makes them tick is what I'm asking them. It's the thing receiving the action. But it's a clause. So if I ask, um, if I say, uh, Rona, tell me what you think, what's the indirect object? Indirect object. Me's, correct. What's the direct object? What you correct, what you think. So clauses can act as these direct and indirect objects. And I've been encouraging you and asking you to start to see sentences structurally. And by that, I mean don't see all of these words. And I know now there's so much scratching on this board, it's crazy. But I want you to see one block. <laughs> one big block right here. And I want you to see another block over here. I don't want you to see four words. I want you to see one piece. And then what's going on? This block is modifying this word. This block is receiving the action of the verb. And now we have a relatively simple arrangement. We don't actually have a lot of words. We just have a few structures. That's, go ahead. No, we're not diagramming today. Sorry. <laughs> what? Diagramming is awesome. You just figure that if we don't bring it up, we'll forget it. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it's not such that. Uh, it's just that uh, I scheduled tomorrow for more work on this, and we can diagram tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 These lunatics. All right. Um, let's move this nonsense out of the way. Although I do want to keep it up there just because I find it's pretty in a sort of modern art kind of sense. <laughs> um, but it's it's stop it, Connor. <laughs> Not true. You're diminishing the efforts of a number of modern artists. <laughs> <laughs> I can spell this for a million dollars.